Hello, this is Grant, and we're back to another episode of Dead Rising 2 Master Run. Today we actually have a nice quest to do. It's pretty fun and a break in what we've been doing so far. We're going to go be taking on TK's goons as they try and break into the different casinos in Fortune City. This helps a lot if you have the defiler, because you can one-shot these guys. And that makes it a lot easier. You just jump, press X, one-shot them. Nice and simple. Otherwise, they go down, and you have to wait for them to get back up before you can hit them again. I would not recommend using guns. I suppose they it'd be their like, bulletproof vest, but they are extremely hard to take down with guns. Maybe not hard, but definitely tedious. Like, you'll go through an entire light machine gun, and it just won't even phase them. You will want to grab a couple of their guns for the drill here. That's by far the best weapon to use on these on it. I'm guessing it's because it just, just doesn't have the same defense they do, so that higher fire rate is very nice for once. Plus, I don't like to waste my current weapons on it, so I like to use that. You can also use the sledgehammer, but it's not nearly as good. It does seem to vary, like... In this case, I use the sword, but other times I've been able to kill the drill in one single clip or magazine from those drill from those guns so I don't know what varies it seems like there's a system in place in Dead Rising where when you take a hit you have some kind of poise and re increased defense so consecutive hits aren't great and also psychopaths like you can't just stun lock them with a machine gun they'll come at you regardless after a while which I get, I mean, you if every psychopath you could just shoot, it'd be realistic, but it wouldn't be a very fun boss fight. I do always try to grab this sword on my way through here all the time, because it is great. It does a lot of damage, and you don't often have a time where you have some big target with a lot of health, like the van or the drills, but when you do, it's pretty nice. It's also pretty useful. It's kind of like a faster defiler. It's not quite as strong, but it's a little bit more available, so I'd recommend that. You can always get the one. There's two in the Americana Casino. There's also one in in Royal Flush Plaza on the second floor. And there's like that little bridge that connects the two areas of the second floor, and there's a little stand, kind of like this uh, that poster stand there. That It's this kind of triangular prism you can climb up on top of, and it's right there. Now that I'm at a higher level, throwing these newspaper things are a great way to kill zombies. They're not that great to fight with, but since they are durable and they just plow through zombies, I like to grab them whenever I can. Plus, I suppose if you're into that, you can watch that instead of Chuck. If you actually look at Dead Rising 1 and 2, there's some stores that are in both, which is a nice touch. Particularly, I believe it's like the clothing stores, like Sport or any kind of like the big classic stores, like Sport Trance. Obviously, that has a little bit more thought put into it than random clothing stores. But like Sport Trance, Modern Businessmen, none of the casinos, because those are, of course, were only in Dead Rising 2. Although, I wouldn't be surprised. It seems like a casino totally could fit in at Willamette. But I don't know. Maybe Colorado doesn't do that kind of thing. I wonder how they decided where they wanted to put Willamette. I think Fortin City, as a pseudo Vegas, wor works and makes a lot of sense, but they could have put it anywhere. Like, they could have easily put it, like, I don't know, in Florida or something. I don't know, I could see them. I think they just like Capcom likes that area because it's kind of has that same geographical feel as in, like, a Silent Hill or Resident Evil game. Which, I would love to start doing some horror. I love horror games. I love horror stories. Not a big horror movie guy, but it'd be a blast. I'm, if I can get my setup to work, I would love to do some Silent Hill. Especially like 2. I've never had the chance to fully play through 2. But it would be a blast. I really love this little cart. You can always get one in Royal Flush Plaza. And it just increases your walking rate immensely. This is my first time actually using these gloves against these guys. It's surprisingly efficient because you can kill them in one little combo. You can make these gloves, you can make two sets of these gloves every time you leave Royal Flush Plaza, so I would recommend it. They're one of my favorite weapons. I actually like them more than the knife gloves, but the knife gloves are just easier to use with their moveset. 
If you really wanted to, you could probably just kill the drill and leave. So if you have like a sniper rifle and you just want to snipe it from far away, there's nothing stopping you. Although if you have a sniper rifle, you can pretty make pretty easy work of these guys. You notice in like this case, like that gun just destroyed that drill, and other times it didn't do a fourth of the health in that other, like in the first case. I don't know why that is. I think it's just an issue with hitboxing or how the game interprets damage damages. There's something going on, but I just don't know what it is. And since it's just an inanimate object, it's not really worth the time to go figure it out. <laughs> What's nice about this quest is it unlocks all these back areas. And there's nothing huge back here. There's always some food and guns. Usually, like, one of them has a light machine gun that always spawns. Or, like, at the Yucatan. There's actually a quest that has you go back there later for Charlie's Gold, which is involving the one of the first survivors we ever saved, Lenny, in the Yucatan with Snowflake. We'll tell you to get the code to get in, and you can go there and get some money. I don't think we do it in this run just because I have never actually done it successfully. I've made sure I go at the right time and go instantly, but it's always either I'm too slow, which that's on me, or it's glitched where I can see like the cases you need to open, and it's like press B to open, and it just won't. But we're not, I'm not really here to show how to like farm money, so I didn't feel it was too important. I do visit it just to like cover it in the guide, and then if you feel that you want to do it yourself, it's pretty easy to match in. You just need to go to the Yucatan after you get the code from Charlie. We will pick up the code from Charlie just to fulfill the request, but it's not really that necessary. I think it gives you like $125,000, which is nice, but if you really need cash, just actually go play Terra's Reality, or do, but you could probably do an easy run where you farm the poker games, plus then you could get the gambling books anyway and farm the, either the video poker or just random slots in any of the casinos. Here I decided to make another flaming bull helm just for the fun of it. <laughs> I didn't realize I got that many posters. I thought I had kind of just given up on it. And here I noticed I didn't grab the motor oil. So unfortunately I decided to make a Molotov instead. I was thinking like it'd be kind of cool like if I end up doing that no zombie kill run. How there's so many worthless weapons in this game. Like the newspaper itself doesn't do anything. But when you're not trying to kill the zombies. It'd be kind of cool if I run around like... Man, I really need a newspaper so I can advance. It's such a powerful weapon because it knocks him down but doesn't kill zombies. Same with a squirt gun. Like, it has this potential where the game could be completely changed if you put just the right, like, the right criteria on it to use. So, I'll try and fit that in as best as I can. I'll probably end up doing that as a stream. But, just because I don't want to get halfway through the game and then realize it's... It doesn't work, and then all of a sudden, sorry guys, it ends early because we're done. But on the other other hand, I'd like to stream it, but since the whole point is not killing these zombies, I probably won't be picking up that many survivors. And that means a lot of downtime, and that's not great for streaming, watching me talk about sit here and not play Dead Rising for two hours. So the... This is a little clunky. I think the fact that you can charge with this is a glitch that you are actually supposed to have the combo card to do it properly. I think the serve bot slicer or whatever that is called, that's the case where you have to have the card to charge. But this one, you can charge with it, but you have to hold down X, you do a headbutt, and then there's this awkward pause, and then you take off. I don't know quite what that is. The just the base skull doesn't have that problem. If you're running and hold X, you'll just start right away. But again, and then again, that does less damage and doesn't have the awesome cutscene effects like this does. If there was a way to make it easier to handle the bull skull without losing it constantly, I would totally do a run through where I had it in every single cutscene. Because it looks amazing. I just picked it up once because like someone suggested it. Like, oh, you can use you can really use the bull skull to defeat Chef Antoine. As you can see, that Molotov was completely underwhelming and did not help me at all. 
Which is too bad. I mean, I'm sure they include it just because Molotov is totally something you would make in a zombie apocalypse, but... I mean, it'd be powerful. I would not want to throw one. Like, I think I talked about in Dead Rising 1. You're kind of like, the mall is what's keeping you safe. If you just burn down the mall by throwing a Molotov, that's not ideal. Plus, Molotovs do not explode. That's not the point. <laughs> the point is, like, they spread fire, and then you, like, it, like, sends gas everywhere. Like, there might be, like, a somewhat explosion, but it's not like a bomb. Rather, it's for starting fires. Like, you toss it into a building, gasoline spreads everywhere, and instantly starts, and then you have a problem. Whereas this game treats it like a grenade. Luckily, there's this awesome light machine gun that spawns here. There's actually, I believe we're in the Yucatan, yeah. There's another light machine gun back where we get the Zombrex, which I think I swing by. So you could get two of those, which is always nice. <laughs> well, I always get a queen, and like I'm gonna hold this, hold on to this, so I can use it at, like, at actually good time, like when the survivor needs help. And then inevitably, I'm just like, eh, screw it. This isn't worth my time. There is a... Hmm. There's like a fire pit down underneath this, I think. Or somewhere in this casino. Got some Zombrex. And it lets you turn money into PP. I don't know if there's a limit, but if not, and you have just tons of money, it'd be kind of cool to see someone burn ridiculous amounts just to like power level. So, oh, maybe Dead Rising needs like a prestige mode, something to like force you to be down at a lower level and play through the game again. Because I feel like I just kind of like you hit level 50 in what one or two runs, and then you're also done with everything you need to do, and then the game just kind of it doesn't have much reason to play. Like you can do some cool stuff, like I said, like fun runs, like oh no zombie kills, but a lot of it ends up being just a lot of waiting, or you it find out that it doesn't work the way you think it would. Which is unfortunate. Let me know, like, leave a comment if you think that you have any cool ideas for some one-off runs. Like, I was considering a run where you have to drink all the alcohol you find, so you have to constantly throwing up, which would be annoying, but interesting. I could do something along the lines of try to keep eight survivors in your party constantly and just... Like, keep them alive the whole time and build them up like, as an army. Give them all light machine guns and just plow through different psychopaths. Or, one thing I, I want to do, especially with Dead Rising 1, a little hidden sword here, by the way, is there's a couple of NPCs at the very beginning, like, in a place where there's no zombies, that act as, like, the tutorial for NPCs. And it'd be cool to have, keep at least one of them alive throughout the entire game, like, get them to the very end. I'm especially curious how there must be somewhere in the game where they stop you from continuing with survivors. In Dead Rising 1, it's you can't go into Carlito's hideout with other survivors, so you have to take him back to the safe house. I don't know what the equivalent in Dead Rising 2 is. Like, what's stopping you from keeping someone all the way into overtime mode? I guess realistically, it wouldn't work in overtime mode because that's a separate game instance, but... You could theoretically keep someone long past when you were meant to have them. And unfortunately, I wanted to do that with Snowball or Snowflake, the tiger. But since she always transitions, it wasn't it wasn't meant to be. Which is too bad. I would love to be like, hey TK, here's me and my tiger. Like if there was a glitch that made it so she would come with you. So, Sally, I cannot. But I think there's a lot of really other cool ways to play out there like so if I wanted to do the like there's a magazine that lets you keep furniture three times as long so maybe I want to do like one that I can only use what I can pick up at the time like I can't carry any weapons martial arts are always very interesting that could be a fun run it would work a lot better with Frank because his attacks are more damaging whereas I think they actually meant for you to use martial arts more in this game so they actually balanced it more it's also way easier to use them in this game, but I'm afraid I would just take forever to kill some of these psychopaths using martial arts. Or I, I think you would run into this issue where like Antoine, the chef that heals, I don't know how you would ever out damage him with just martial arts, so you might 
you just might not be able to use it there. Plus in Dead Rising 1, you can get a book that increases the power of your attacks. I do not know if that's the case in Dead Rising 2. So here to kind of demonstrate that these guys are pretty annoying to deal with using guns. Maybe it might just be I'm missing, but I'm not too concerned. I figured I'd use this thing up and then move on from there. Usually I will have these sniper rifles and I can just plow them through. It takes two hits to kill the sniper, so you can just shoot him once to knock him down and shoot him once again on the ground. Don't even give him a chance to get back up. And then here you have to destroy this man, who's just a giant... I would say meat shield. Like, it's not going to go anywhere. You just have to deal as much damage. It just It's a tank. I use the sword. It's pretty good. You can use the crowbar. That's not terrible. The guns are okay, too. I figured I'd throw this grenade because there happens to be two propane tanks. Obvious there to deal damage. It's... It works pretty well. And this will also open up a shortcut into the Atlantica Casino. Where you go into their vault. It's not that useful, but... It's kind of nice. There's a couple times where it offers a shorter route. So this is actually kind of a setup, if you know the game of Dead Rising 2, that it's made to look like TK caused the zombie outbreak just to loot the city, but that's actually a side issue. Fantastic. I also get, I get that it's the game, and <laughs> Chuck hasn't counted these guys before, but just because they're like stealing from a vault in a place where that's going to be burned to the ground in two days and no one else is there doesn't mean you should just straight up murder them like they do shoot at you but still if you didn't know that going in i think Chuck's a little psychopath of himself he's killed more people than any psychopath that you fight in these games i actually think uh you encountered chuck in the the Frank version, but I don't want to go too into that. I think this is kind of a special case, Chuck. I'll meet you at eleven o'clock in the bar at the Yucatan. So we're finally gonna go learn out who the reporter's Rebecca Chang's source was, who is the person who originally incriminated Chuck. At first he thought it was TK, but she says that's not the case, so we can go find out who it is in the upcoming episodes. We also have to finally unlock the shortcut. Basically, in Palisades Plaza, we can do the Wilted Flower quest, which we just need to bring a woman who is stuck in a tanning bed a drink. And then she'll show us a shortcut. We're also going to go kill a psychopath called Slappy, who is a little bit clunky. It's quite you. <laughs> I hope you're watching there if you saw those zombies fall from the sky. I have no idea what the deal with that was. Either it was a glitch where it thought there was a spot it could spawn them on and then they fell off. Or I guess it just, that maybe that's how it spawns zombies is it drops them from the sky and then just lets them figure out. But I'm really glad I caught that on the camera because stuff like that happens a lot. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, check out one of the links below. Until next time, don't take your zombie safety for granted.